remember, but two days ago, I know the quarantine has got us all in a fuzz, but uh, two days ago, I tried to do something uh, unique to the AeroPress, Johnny on the spot, because some of you commented about, hey, have you tried the inversion process of doing an AeroPress correctly? So, uh, so that's what we're going to try uh, today. So I have over here with me a, an interesting setup, if you can see over here. Uh, obviously, we have our devotional that we're going to be looking at, uh, but this is our AeroPress device, and I'm going to keep it in the inversion pattern, all right? And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, filters that are really, really good to uh, make sure you're, you're taking a look at uh, when you're making your coffee. The filters are important. The type of cup is sometimes also important here. Type of cup is also important. I like ones that are like very wide mouth because then you get uh, appreciation for uh, you know the the floral notes you know as you smell. It. So that's uh, something we'll we'll take a look at. And then um, I just got the water off boil, so uh, so it's good to go. Um, I brought this just to describe why we use certain filters over others. So uh, without further ado. Um, I want us to walk us through somewhat of a process of, of uh, how this all works. Uh, before we get started, I need to do one thing on Facebook, and that is always to share it. Uh, which, by the way, if you take this time, you could also like and share the video too. Um, I just wanted to make sure that I at least shared it to my page. I hope you guys have been doing well. It's the end of the week. You made it to Friday, guys. TGIF, right? Well, um, here we go. Uh, as me and share and go public. So, thanks again for joining me by the uh, by the blue door. Um, and uh, so we have our AeroPress this morning. Uh, not only that, oh, did I leave the beans? <gasps> oh my god! Well, I have those beans there. I have a really I I roast you know. I don't need to show you, but I roasted some coffee beans not too long ago uh, from Ethiopia, uh, Ethiopia Ukuro, uh, which is a co-op farm program uh, in Ethiopia, and uh, it was just giving me a description of like, hey, what type of notes would you be expecting in a light roast? And I got sold on one of the descriptions, and the description was, it tastes like apricot pie. So I said, you know what, I gotta roast that, I gotta give it a shot. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's always helpful to have other technology uh, to help with um, giving you ideas or impressions about coffee. And uh, there's a great uh, uh, diagram, and I'm gonna pull that up for you right here. Uh, I'm gonna type this in over here. Ethiopia, uh, Ukuro, Co-op. And it gives you these cool notes. And if you look over here, sorry, I'm kind of doing two things at once. Um, what's neat is you actually can really look at um, some interesting things about like the farms. Kind of get a little bit closer, okay? You know, and you can read about these guys. Uh, you know, so you're not just like drinking coffee, you're actually getting to learn a little bit about how that coffee got to your cup. Yeah, and you go full screen, okay? So that's from the Sweet Maria's website, but the, really the one thing I, I wanted to show you was when you know like a green coffee bean might be a hit. Like is it all guesswork on your part? There's people that do tastings, and I think the best coffees are the most well-balanced coffees. So, my last thing I want to show, again, super homey right here, uh, is if you look over here, okay, if you look over oh, on this side, all right, uh, you'll see this well-roundedness, and this diagram has little words on on the. Uh, uh, just on the outside here, and it'll tell you things like fragrance, wet aroma, brightness, flavor, uh, body, finish, the sweetness, the clean cup, complexity, uniformity, you know, and it's got high marks all over. So it makes this nice big round circle, which means it's a really good cup of gel. 
So uh, I want to see how good they think it really is by doing the arrow thrust. And so I'm going to show you a little bit of the process here. Again, you bring the, your water to a boil, and I'm going to see if I can do one thing real fast. Um, uh, let's see here. So I got settings, settings, audio video settings, recording format. I don't know. I'm going to have to mess with that a little bit later. So, so what I have here is I have our arrow press, okay? And inside, I had a nice friend of mine give me a metal filter, okay? I think metal filters are the way to go. It's ultra fine. I almost know if you can even see through it. Yeah. So, metal filters are great. I like using metal filters. When I use my Chemex over here, I love using a metal filter. And that's because coffee beans have natural oils in them. Uh, and I think the, the, the oils in coffee give that buttery feel. It uh, makes the water wetter. I don't know, kind of a, you can't really taste the difference. If you do a side-by-side, -side, even in a Mr. Coffee machine, throw in a metal filter and throw in a paper filter and you'll taste the difference. Uh, Coffee tastes drier when it's when it's with paper. Sometimes paper adds flavor uh, to your coffee. So uh, I like to use metal. And guess what? They make metal filters for your AeroPress, which is really really cool. So we're going to take a look at at that. And then the last part I have, uh, where did it go? Oh, right here in front of my face. Because most people use these little filter guys, and they give you quite a bit, you know, maybe there's like 70 of them in here. Um, and this is a little uh, filter holder. I didn't know what that was. It just kind of looked funny to me. So that's a filter holder. Uh, you don't have to rebuy these all the time. You know, this is kind of like a, a one and done mix. So once you're done, you are done. So I'm gonna put these in here, put these over there, okay? We're gonna get to our table talk pretty soon. But I'm really excited to show you like how this whole process works. I want to keep this open. So all right. I took some beans. They're they're between somewhat of a fine, fine grind and a medium grind. Um, I've heard that there's different opinions on each one. You could almost do it like a French press, but I don't want to go too fine on this one. Alright? So I'm gonna do one for one for me. One for myself. And another for I. Boy, this thing keeps zooming in. Needs to stop. And one for an extra plus in extra blessing pat all right there we go gotta eyeball it sometimes all right uh, sometimes when you cook and you bake and you're just like well it's okay to put in a pinch and guess what a pinch is you, know, you do things by sight by feel so so that's what we have there okay so we are we are set on this device what I'm gonna do I'm going to pour in, we're going to do the inversion method. I'm going to pour in some hot water, but letting it cool for just a little bit. And by the way, you can comment below. I'll be able to see your comments shortly. Um, sorry about all the transitions. Now I'm having to fight the device. All right. So I'm pouring in all the coffee. Well, that's about it. Now here's the secret, guys. This is what I did not do very well last time. And at the 10 minute mark, uh, we had, uh, let's just say I poured one out for the homies, okay? So so I'm gonna stir this up. Ooh, this is gonna be probably kind of strong here. You stir this up. You wanna make sure all those beans uh, get soaked. Because the moment you put in hot, hot water into uh, coffee beans, uh, the coffee beans rise to the top, they float, just like you and me would in a pool, so they don't actually get the uh, 
you won't get a good extraction if they're not soaking. So here we got that going on. Yeah, it does seem like a lot of work, but you know, overall, uh, it's okay to work hard. It's okay to work hard. Sometimes you get your best product when you put in the most effort. So next thing I have over here, okay, uh, is what you gotta do safely, okay? There is a space of water, uh, air right here, to make sure that everything goes well. I'm gonna do this, zoom out ever so slightly. Push this down, keep right about there, okay? Let me see if I can almost tilt that into the camera. Let's see, can you see it without me spilling that out? So I pushed the coffee, I forced it all the way up to about the very, very top there, okay? Oh, I'm a crazy man. I got a tripod and a camera, okay? So this is what it looks like, okay? And I have just a tiny, tiny little gap uh, so that that way when I invert it, uh, we should be golden. And I shouldn't be able to spill it all. It should be all working out really, really well. So. Take your filter, take all this, and uh, throw this on, click this in. It is art, absolutely. Amen to that, whoever said that. So it is art. Take your great mug of choice. Today I went with an open wide mug, and uh, I'm gonna place this on top, okay? I think we're good, I think we're good. And again, I'm like fighting this device. It keeps wanting to zoom in. Stop zooming in me though. All right. So I've, I've learned my virtual assistant is uh, kind of a control freak. All right. So this is what I'm going to do. Three, two, one, invert. Okay. There we go. Lost none. Now. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take this here, I'm going to press down. Yeah, this is the new uh, COVID-19 vaccine shot. It's a booster shot. It's a huge vaccine. <laughs> there we go. Oh, wow. I guess I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to do any more. Because if I did any more, I feel like it might push too much. Wow. Man, that looks good. You got to check this out. I'm, ex I'm excited. So I got an extra mug. I brought it with me, um, you know, because uh, I, I never want to drink alone. Actually, kind of lonely. So, uh, yeah. All right. I brought an extra mug because you want to make sure that... Uh, all the extra drippings go there. So I'll just put that over there by my other imaginary friend. Okay. No, you guys are always welcome to join me. Coffee with Rayburn. Just stop over here. We'll, we'll do everything outside from six feet away. All right. So here we are. This is our coffee for today. This is an AeroPress. Uh, don't get confused with if it's being called espresso. I called it espresso, but it is strong. It's like coffee concentrate. So... Uh, I'm excited to see if apricot pie is the option over here. Is that going to be a flavor of choice? So let's give this a shot, guys. You got to be jolly. It's, it's good to be jolly. All right. Oh, my goodness. The smell. The smell is good. Like, it's like nutmeggy cinnamon. And uh, I know I gotta, I get, you gotta taste it. You know the nasal, it's called the, the the nasal pharyngeal pathway. So your 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 nose and your 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 throat are all connected. So that's why when you close your nose and you drink something, you can't really taste it. Or if you eat something and you don't breathe, or or you breathe but you don't have your mouth. Eat. Anyways, whatever. Let's try it out. So. Hmm. It's a hard guess. I hope you guys have your mugs with you. 
have a drink with me, have a sip with me. Definitely. It's got a citrus front end. Like it is bold and bright. That's really good. You know what's good? When you have freshly roasted coffee, you never learn. There's like sweet sugariness on the back end. Like you don't feel any, this isn't bitter at all. It doesn't taste like diner coffee. It doesn't taste like Starbucks. It's, it's sweet. You wouldn't want to add anything to this. This is really, really nice. Um, so. Mm. I approve. I was going for apricot pie because I've never had an apricot pie. But maybe because I've never had apricot pie, I don't know how to taste for apricot pie. I've had apricots before. I don't know. I'll have to think more about it. Well, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on uh, this adventure of the inversion process of the AeroPress. We did not lose one drop, not one this time. So I feel like I, 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 I feel like I made myself proud. I, Dana, I hope I made yourself proud because <laughs> uh, it was it was a challenge. It was a dare on the fly, and I messed it all up. And whatever, we had a good time though. That's that's part of coffee. It's allowed to be messy as long as it's fun. So. Um, let me do one thing real quick. I got I need to do something with the settings. I saw something on the Zoom function. Uh, audio, video, recording, default, mix all channels, maximum Zoom. Uh, I'm going to take that off. Save. All right. Default tap Zoom. There we go. OK. Thanks for being patient. Thanks for putting up with our uh, street noise, all right? I really call that free tunes. And uh, I hope when it zooms back in, it shouldn't do it like, woof. Hey, good to see ya. It's one of my neighbors. I'm in a bike gang over here. We all uh, have bikes and we all bike around the neighborhood. Um, still a gang nonetheless, even if you're on your townie bike. All right, so guys. Grab your table talks, grab your coffee, and uh, we'll work through this uh, together. Today is uh, May 8th, okay, right before the weekend. This one is titled uh, Spiritual Immaturity, okay? Not spiritual maturity, but spiritual immaturity. And again, we've been going through the book of uh, Hebrews, which actually I thought was kind of funny because I it didn't even dawn on me, but here we are drinking coffee together reading from the book of hebrews who brews hebrews hebrews what hebrews coffee so i won't quit my day job all right by the way i actually can't see your comments as they come through on the device so that's kind of neat um let me see if i can pull this one thing up over here uh this is going live all right All right, so there's a few shout outs over here. We've got uh, Christine, we got Gary, we got Jason, we got Robert, we got uh, Jeannie, we got David, we got Leo, we got Robert again. Okay, uh, listen, and thank you guys for all being here. So, um, kind of weirdly, I got, uh, yeah, I'm not a comedian, not a comedian. It, it's kind of neat when you comment on here, little inception effect, I can see your comments show up at the top left. I didn't know how to do that before, but now I do that. So you can type in and then boom, I can kind of see what you're saying. So uh, I just don't know who, but I will respond no matter what. All right. So, well, let's uh, let's open up with prayer and, uh, and we'll begin. So uh, let's get started. Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this wonderful day. Lord, for blessing us, for watching over us. And Lord, uh, we just ask that you continue to be with us. Uh, each and every day of our of our lives, a lot of us are having anxiety. A lot of us are looking for hope. A lot of us are looking for growth. Uh, Lord, maybe in a time of quarantine, it's a time for spiritual growth. And Lord, maybe these verses would speak to our own spiritual growth. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, 
If you have your Table Talk uh, devotions, if you just want to listen and drink along, all right, you can do it that way. You can also go on Google, just type in Table Talk devotions, just type that right in, and you'll go ahead and you'll you'll see the, the today's devotional up and ready. So uh, these are a little bit wordy, but I like them. They're deep. They give you something to really chew on throughout the day. So here it says this. It says, though by this time, Hebrews chapter 5, 11 through 13, Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you, again, the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. Being on spiritual milk versus spiritual meat, right? Uh, you think about when a baby is born, when a calf is born, uh, uh, you drink from the mother's milk first. You don't go straight into eating grasses and all of that. It's uh, There's phases of that we all walk through in our spiritual maturity. Um, but the expectation is that we aren't 25-year-olds still eating Gerber's, you know, for our morning breakfast, okay? At some point, we move beyond, uh, we go deeper in our relationship with the Lord. Hebrews chapter 4 14 through chapters 5 10 gives us a brief presentation on the priestly office of jesus so everything we've talked about before this moment was about christ as our high priest remember he's the high priest higher better more perfect than the priests that came before that offered sacrifices on behalf of the people it was on the priestly office of Christ, focusing on the incarnation as a qualifying, as qualifying Jesus to be our high priest on the choice of God the Father, as appointing Jesus to be our high priest, and on the suffering of Jesus as making him a high priest who can sympathize with us. That's what we talked about yesterday. If you missed yesterday's devotion, check that out. Um, through suffering and death, he was perfected as our high priest, thus becoming the source of eternal salvation. Thus becoming the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him. Here we see the close connection between faith and obedience. They go hand in hand, which we must distinguish but never separate. Faith in Christ alone brings us into salvation, but faith in Christ necessarily, inevitably, and unfailingly bears fruit in our obedience to the revealed will of God. Uh, I heard uh, yesterday I was helping out a little bit with the ladies book study and so you can overhear things in the background and someone had said that uh, you know faith faith and obedience um, should it's not like we should trust in Jesus and now obey as if you're adding something to that belief that Jesus is the Son of God who's come to take away our sins of the world, died on the cross, raised on the third day, now sits at the right hand of God the Father. That's faith. Believing that that's actually who God says he is, that Jesus says, I am the Father and I are one. That takes real authentic faith to, to trust in that. But in trusting in that type of faith, having that relationship with Jesus as your Lord and Savior, will bear fruit in your life. It's not that now that I trust Jesus, now I got to go do a lot of things. It, that's a workspace faith. Faith and obedience go hand in hand because faith ultimately will naturally produce fruit. You can't do that without faith. So, to put it another way, Jesus is not our Savior if he is not also our Lord. Jesus is not our Savior if he's not also our Lord. The discussion of Jesus' high priestly office is short in Hebrews, and the author will return to it more in detail in chapter 7. And he pauses the argument from chapters 5 to 6 to give a warning and an exhortation. In 5.11, we sense the author's frustration. At this point in the book, he wants to discuss the priestly work of Christ further, but he cannot because the audience is not ready. They have become dull of hearing verse 11, right? And here the author refers to spiritual unpreparedness. They're equivocating on whether to remain followers of Jesus was impeding their advancement in the faith. This then warns us that growth 
in the grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ comes only to those who are ready for it. A lack of committed discipleship can dull our spiritual senses and even move us backwards in the school of Christ. Spiritual immaturity, we'll finish here, characterized the original audience of the book of Hebrews. As the author goes on to argue in Hebrews, the spiritual regression of the readers put them in a situation where they would need remedial education in the basic principles of the oracles of God. I mean, have you ever heard someone say, you need to go back to elementary school? Clearly, you missed something. Um, I remember giving a PSAT uh, class, and I was just talking about the story yesterday. Um, not PSA, I was giving out the PSATs, and uh, before you, you take the exam, I, you, all the students are supposed to write, I certify that I will not, and then, you know, cheat and all that kind of stuff. But you have to, to certify it, you got to write it in cursive, and the very first part was, I certify that. And everyone always asks, year to year, how do you write the cursive I? Can you do it? It's been a while, so we always have to write out the cursive I on the board, okay? So, anyways, um, then I got to say, y'all need to go back to fourth, fifth grade, and actually even probably third grade, you start learning cursive. So, um, but anyways, we have spiritual regression. When you get out of the loop, this quarantine could set a lot of people back, spiritually speaking, that we begin to feel like, well, I haven't felt connected because I've chosen not to be involved in a lot of things. And then the church starts opening up and programs start opening up and uh, I'm just not going to do it anymore. You know, and we fall off the bandwagon and Paul kind of says, listen, you need to fight the faith, fight for the faith. You need to run the race, okay? And, and, and maybe you need to look back at those basic oracles of God, the basic principles, the basic sayings of God to get you back on track. So that's where we, we are concluding here. It says here, Although we do not know exactly how long the audience had been believers when the book of Hebrews was written, it was certainly long enough that their continuing immaturity was unacceptable. So it is for us. God expects Christians to grow. The Lord does not want us to be content um, with only the basics of the faith, the essential gospel that saves. As we are able, we should seek to grow in the breadth, in the depth, of our knowledge of faith. Guys, that's kind of where we, we end today. You know, having these daily devotionals, um, I think might be helpful in our spiritual growth. It's a commitment to a practice, not because we do it out of obligation. It's not just, I'm going through the motions of faith, I just do my daily devotional because whatever, that's what I wanna do. Um, there's no heart in that kind of response. Faith, will produce fruit because of the obedience that we naturally want to walk into because we love the Lord. He first loved us, so we love him back. And so that's kind of our, our walk. Um, but anyways, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, thank you so much for my friend who uh, uh, sponsored our, our Aero Press and the metal filters because I'll tell you what, I know it makes a big difference. Um, uh, I'm going to take off, little announcement, I'm going to take off Mondays. I think Monday mornings, uh, I need that as a day off. But we'll do daily devotions Tuesdays uh, through Fridays uh, together, 8 a.m. a weekday. So I wanted to put that out there. I uh, just need a little little break on a Monday morning. Uh, but other than that, maybe Monday afternoon I might do something. But but Monday mornings, uh, be nice to kind of take it easy in a different way. So uh, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, again, uh, enjoy your day. Enjoy the weekend. 10 a.m. Uh, join us at Morningstar Church if you feel comfortable. We have everything provided for uh, to keep things as touchless as possible and also uh, to join in corporate worship where we're together. But if you still feel that staying home is what's best for you, we honor that. We would ask uh, to be home and watch us online as we will be streaming uh, both on YouTube Live and Facebook Live together. And so thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having some Ethiopian coffee. And I hope you guys enjoy your day. Be blessed, and I will see you.